Prior to March 2017, the latest version of Docker was Docker 1.13, and at the time of recording this course, the latest version of Docker is 17.03. That's a pretty big difference between 1.13 and 1703, and no, it didn't jump 16 major versions in a few weeks. What happened was, on March 2nd, 2017, Docker completely changed their version format, and also changed the name of the Docker Engine package to either Docker Community Edition or Docker Enterprise Edition. For the most part, things will continue to work the same as before, but out in the wild, you may find older material that references the old style of how Docker was versioned. Before we tackle versions, let's first go over the differences between Docker Community Edition and Docker Enterprise Edition. Docker Community Edition, or Docker CE for short, is free and open source. It's what we're going to be using in this course, and it's just a rebranded name for the same old Docker engine that was in use for the last couple of years. Docker CE is aimed at developers and do-it-yourself ops teams who are looking to Dockerize their applications. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this edition. It's not a watered-down or gimped version of EE. In fact, it has the same core features as Enterprise Edition. I'm using the Community Edition right now to run production-grade systems and have been for a number of years. Docker Enterprise Edition is for when you're ready to put on your big boy or girl pants and run mission-critical applications with Docker. You can still do this with the Community Edition, but you're going to miss out on a number of goodies that the Enterprise Edition offers. Some of those goodies are being able to run certified Docker images and plugins, leverage Docker data center with various levels of options, receive vulnerability scan results on your Docker images, and get official same-day support. All of this costs some amount of money, depending on what tier you want to sign up for, and the prices range from $750 to $2,000 per year. Since we're not using EE in this course, I'm kind of skimming over the details here, but if you think Enterprise Edition is something you may want to use later, I did leave a couple of links in the notes for you to check out. So, long story short, Docker CE is very much production ready, but Docker EE adds a number of features that you may find necessary in an enterprise environment. Now let's talk about how versioning works. Docker Community Edition comes with two release channels. The first one is Edge, and its release cycle will be a new version every single month. You would choose this channel if you want to live on the bleeding edge. You'll get new features every month. The second channel is Stable, and you'll get a new release every quarter, which is every three months. By choosing Stable, you need to wait a little bit longer for new features, but it's going to be easier to maintain since it doesn't change as often. The Edge channel will get security and bug fixes during the month it is current, whereas the Stable channel will receive patches for bug fixes and security issues four months after its initial release. Docker Enterprise Edition will be released every quarter and each release is supported and maintained for an entire year. Both security and general bug fixes will be backported to all supported versions. Here's a diagram that spans across eight months of releases. The versioning scheme is tied into the date. For example, 17.03 means year 2017, month 3, which happens to be March. Then, the next release would be 17.04, which is April 2017, and so on. This diagram from Docker didn't show patch-related versions, but if let's say 17.04 came out, but then it needed a bug fix maybe like a week later, you would end up seeing a third number after the 04. I really like this version change because now we'll be able to predict when a new release will come out. If you've ever been in charge of maintaining a number of servers, you know that a predictable release cycle is a huge win. Another really nice bonus is being able to tie in a point of time to a release. For example, the old Docker 1.13 version didn't really say much about when it was released. If you were new to Docker and you saw version 1.13, you would have no idea if it were two days or two years old. With the new format, once you understand how it works, then you can instantly look at your version and determine how old it is. Then, with the predictable release cycle, 
you can anticipate the next stable or edge release. So that's how versioning works with Docker. My recommendation would be to use the stable release unless something pops up in the edge release that you really need. Sometimes having access to new features a few months early is well worth the risks of encountering bugs and it's not difficult to switch between both channels. I'll see you in the next lecture where we compare two ways of installing Docker on macOS and Windows. See you there.